Scott. Uh, give us your immediate reaction. We just saw Chris Cyborg defend her featherweight title. First round KO. What were your thoughts on the on the finish? I mean, I, I thought she looked impressive. She's, uh, it's just amazing to me. She just looks like she's getting better and better. She looks as fast as ever through some great combinations tonight. And, um, you know, it was, you know, it was, uh, I mean, she looked great. That's, that's what I like to say about that. Yeah. And Sinead, you know, she uh, lived up to what she said. She was going to bring the fight. She was not going to back down. Obviously, it didn't turn out uh, the way she wanted. But uh, I think, you know, she, w she put on a fight. Well, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, listen, she is a, a girl that has proven she has a, a real puncher's chance. And if she would have hit Cyborg on the chin early, it could have, you know, maybe hurt her. And I think that was her strategy. And they came out swinging for the fences, you know, from, from the opening bell. So I think the fans got, uh, you know, their money's worth tonight. It's going to be great television on Showtime. I think that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a great, great night. Yeah. What's going to be next for Cyborg? She looks so dominated. A lot of people are saying, hey, look, maybe Kat Zingano, you know, she hasn't fought her yet. Um, is, is that it, or is there something else perhaps in, in the horizon for Cyborg? Well, you know, it's, you know, everybody's talking about Kayla Harrison. And Kayla, but, you know, Kayla Harrison is not signed with Bellator. So, you know, I know she's a free agent. I think we're going to start talking to uh, her management early next week. And, um, you know, see if we can bring her into the roster, and then we could maybe start promoting that fight. But I think for Cyborg, you know, the next fight is, you know, I mean, we, we have a couple of girls in mind, but I think Kat Zagano is definitely one of them. Uh, and, you know, we'll decide that, you know, as we circle back, you know, and go in, and we'll talk, start talking to the fight team uh, early next week, and, you know, we'll probably have something. Because we want her to fight again as early as maybe, you know, February, March, yeah. uh, you know, of, of next year. So we want to turn her around as, as soon as she wants to. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have some opponents for her. Yeah. And you mentioned Kayla there. You told me yesterday that, you know, she was coming, she, you know, she was there, um, and you were going to say hello and have a, a conversation with her. I talked to Kayla. She said you guys talked. Um, can you tell us about that conversation, and what was your uh, impressions of Kayla? I mean, look, she's an accomplished athlete. She's fought some good competition. She, I think she's, uh, you know, a uh, hard worker. I, walked, I watched her train about eight months ago uh, in the gym, or maybe six months ago in the gym. This girl is uh, a force to be reckoned with. Um, but I just want to let her know that we are going to start talking to Ali and that we are serious and that uh, we'll do our best to try to put a deal together to have her come over here so she can uh, you know, fight Cyborg and some of the other girls we have in the roster. Yeah. Has Cyborg ever mentioned anything to you about Kayla? Yeah, she said, look, you know, this is something that you know, she's, she's fine with. She goes, if you get on the roster, then let's get it on. And that's her attitude, you know. If she's not on the roster, then there's nothing to talk about. And there's no, you know, like, why even talk about her? So uh, if we put it together, you know, I think you'll hear a lot, a lot more chatter uh, between the two girls. Yeah. And uh, just real quick, in the Comey event, uh, Linton Vassell picked up a, a victory. Um, you said that, let's wait and see how they look before, you know, I label somebody, you know, next contender at, at heavyweight. Yeah. Um, what did you think of his performance, and do you think it, it merits a title shot? You know, I'll tell you, um, I want to go back and look at the tape, because that was a really close fight, and, and I, I was telling uh, Rich and Mike, I said, you know, I really feel sorry for the judges trying to judge that fight, because it was just back and forth, back and forth, and they both had a couple of groin shots, there's some breaks in the fight. So let me, you know, let me go back and, and take a look, and then, and then we'll go from there. But, um, you know, let's see how the rankings go, and, and uh, we'll take a look at that too, and yeah. then we'll make a decision. And just a couple quick ones for me. Pico mm -hmm. now on a 5-5 mm -hmm. winning streak, mm -hmm. uh, looking quite impressive, obviously taking the undefeated record from mm -hmm. Justin Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. What is next for Pico? I is it a title shot, or would you like to sort of uh, cook his development a little bit longer before you, you throw him against the top, top dogs at 145? I'd say Aaron looked fantastic. And uh, it was a fight that I really watched carefully because, you know, you know, it's something that is getting right up there. Um, title shot, I'm not sure. I don't think so. But, you know, maybe him and Sanchez can, can put, it, put it together. Or, you know, we have a couple other fighters that, you know, we'd love to, to put in the mix uh, at 145. But we'll have plenty of good competition uh, for him to fight. But I think he had a dominant performance against an undefeated fighter. And he looked great. And so, to me, I congratulate him and said, hey, you look great. You were patient. And uh, you did what you had to do. And you look great doing it tonight. So, I think it was a good night for Pico. Yeah. And lastly, uh, Valerie Loretta, one of uh, Bellator's biggest prospects. Mm -hmm. uh, she's now back in the win column, picked mm -hmm. up a, a decision win in the preliminary card. Uh, what are your thoughts on her ceiling and, and overall, you know, watching a, a prospect coming back from uh, her first defeat and mm -hmm. getting back in the win column? You know, I'll tell you, um, and I and – I, 
I want to quote Dan Lambert on this because Dan, as you know, owns AT&T here where she trains. He said, look, Coker, when she lost, she's back in the gym and she was training right away. And she's has a mentality, you know, of a winner and she's going to keep training hard. And this girl's going to just keep grinding it out. And so uh, to me, you know, she had a victory. Let's put her in there maybe in the next two or three months and keep her development moving forward. And let's see how she looks, you know, in the next, I will say, six, eight months, a year. Then we'll know what we really have. But uh, as long as she continues to win and looks better and, and she's growing. But when Dan tells me, look, this guy has, has seen everything. And when he tells me, you know, she works hard in the gym and she's in there and she's serious, you know, then that's a, that says a lot to me. So that's what I, I, I hang my hat on. Jim Barcelona, Miami Herald. Mm -hmm. Scott, what did you think tonight in South Florida? the event, the crowd, and just all that. How did you view all that at the end of the night? Yeah, you know, it was, it's our first time here, and the hotel's amazing. The venue was amazing. Um, and uh, I think we had a great night of fights for the fans that showed up. Um, and uh, we'll definitely be back. You know, the Hard Rock treated us very well. And um, I think we made great television. The fights were amazing. Uh, and when you think about South Florida, I think about, you know, AT&T, obviously, with Dan Lambert. I mean, what an amazing gym he's got over there. And Sanford MMA, who has another. I mean, I would say 50% of, of the top 10 athletes fighting in MMA are probably at these two gyms right now, right? So it's amazing that they have so much talent here. And you guys saw who's in the crowd tonight. It's like the who's who of MMA. A lot of legends, a lot of great champions. And it's, it's just, you know, it was an honor to have some of the fighters here and and uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a small community. Everybody knows everybody. But I, I tell you, they should be proud of, of South Florida because as far as talent goes, man, this is a really impressive uh, location to have that much talent. And, and as, I think you saw a lot of it tonight here in the building. And to follow up on that, too, I think almost all but one of the Sanford MMA and American Top Team fighters got the victory tonight. I was just curious your thoughts, uh, three of them, and this will be my last question, of Cody, Roman, and Steve Mowry. Yeah, Maori, um, that was that was you know now I think he's ten and zero, right? He's uh, yeah, great submission. Uh, he, you know he he's somebody that I think deserves to take the next step up. So he definitely will have a, a fight that uh, is meaningful. In fact, when I was leaving the uh, the venue, he's like, "Hey, Coker, I want to talk to you. Me, me and you, me and you." I'm like, "Oh, me and you." He's like, "Me and you." I said, "Okay, give me a call." But um, he's somebody that um, I have high hopes for in, in that division. Hey, Scott, Dan Yanofsky of Fightful here. Uh, Chris Cyborg looked pretty solid tonight, really, really showed her uh, striking capabilities again. Uh, she was talking about Kat Zingano before, and then there's the idea of Arlene Blanco, who just won her fight tonight, mm -hmm. uh, get a rematch per se. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, um, I'm going to revert back to you know what we normally do, which is go back, talk to the fight team. and But I think she should fight Kat at some point. And, you know, if we were successful in uh, signing Kayla, maybe we put that fight together sooner than later. So, you know, it's, we, have, we have a couple options. But, uh, you know, we will do our best to make a, a, a good offer and try to bring Kayla here uh, to Bellator. And speaking of uh, potential fights, Bruna Ellen called out Valerie Lareda earlier today after her win. Both uh, fighters won tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, both can have a little bit of the same breaks. What are your thoughts on that matchup and that for Valerie in general? Yeah, I think I think Bruna has too many fights right now. I think that eventually Valley could fight her, but I would give her a couple more fights with maybe more of it, like a, you know three to four fights. I think that uh, Bruna has about seven, eight fights, so I think they're about four fights apart. But uh, eventually they can catch up to each other and, and get it on. And uh, finally, for me, you had Dan Lambert here. You had uh, Austin Vandeford here, mm -hmm. Paige Van Zant. Some of these people have been in AEW programming. Mm -hmm. Some of them will be appearing on AEW programming tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts? on everyone everyone from MMA going to pro wrestling and what it will be of Jake Hager, who I believe you still have signed to Bellator. Yeah, you know, uh, I'll speak about Jake Hager first. Um, he put his hat in to fight Fedor when we were looking for an opponent uh, that Fedor would want to fight in, uh, uh, in last month, actually, and uh, in October. And, uh, you know, Fedor was like, I don't, you know, I don't think he has enough experience to, to come fight. And I don't know if we, we could probably get a commission to sign off on that because of the experience, the difference in experience. But um, I, love, I love Jake. I think, you know, that he's doing a great job in wrestling. We'd love to have him back. So, Jake, wherever you are, if you're, if you're watching, give us a call. We'll let you get you back into the cage. 
Uh, in the meantime, you know, all the ATT guys are over there, and they're they're doing a great job. You know, it's it's so funny for me to see Dan on TV, and he's selling it out there, and he's doing a great job. And this is, he told me he goes, this is a childhood passion of mine. This is something I really love. Uh, and I could tell when he goes out there and he starts selling it, and I love it that he brings the guys and and all the girls, and he, and he and he and he basically you know gets his fighters in there, and and uh, some are ours, some are from different leagues, and you know it's just a lot of fun to watch. So uh, he told me, I, I think he, well, I don't want to, I don't want to be a spoiler, so I can't tell you what happens tomorrow night. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks for the time, Scott. Thank you. Recording stopped. Good. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin the outcome tomorrow. I'm watching it tomorrow. <laughs> Next up is Lynn Vassell.